This is part two of the video series. This section will document the steps to create an input file that will be used in the Codices program. This program will take the value from an analog input and prepare the command to convert the input from a 10-bit number, 0 to 1023 digital, to a current for a PWM output, 300 to 1100 milliamps. The first thing I'm going to do is add an input program to Codices. So if I open up the input devices, the little plus arrow, I see that I've got a 0200 main under the input devices. Highlighting the 0200 input devices, pushing the right mouse button, right mouse click, I can add an object. I want to call this new object underscore 0201 underscore potentiometer. Leaving it at CFC as far as the type of uh, program organization unit. Okay. Now I need to call this program from the, the main section of the input program. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this, do a right mouse click and hit rename. That allows me to get the, the program name without me having to type in underscore 0201 potentiometer. Do a control C, hit cancel. Under the main section, I want to highlight return and put in control V, which is the name of that program. Okay. Um, as any new programmer should be doing, do a couple steps and then do a compile. So I'm going to go ahead and do a project rebuild all. Comes down with zero errors. I'm also going to save this. I want to make sure it's saving in my directory 405 save it right there okay okay so now I am going to create code in the 0201 potentiometer section there are going to be three buttons I basically use an input button up here for input devices, output devices, and boxes. So the first thing I'm going to do is select the input. I just selected it and then I, I released the button and came onto the, the white area of the screen. If I highlight my three question marks and push a function key F2, it gives me the input assistant. Here I'm going to look for the analog input potentiometer. I'm going to look, under, look for it under the I.O. section. Analog input potentiometer. It's what we created in the part one of the video in the uh, I.O. section. When I select off of it, you know, now I can either hold the shift key and the arrows and move it around since I've selected it, or I can grab it from that, that point with my mouse and put it wherever I want to. So analog input potentiometer. I want to go ahead and have a box next that comes down. Uh, and will always come in, so I'm going to... I'm going to look at the end and I want to do my input assistant again and I want to be able to find something called a scale block. And this scale block is going to go from, checks, I'm structured here, it's going to go from my uh, digital 0 to 1023 number to 0 to 5 volts. We can see here is the scale block we're going to use later in the program. Let's go find not sure what section it's in so I'm just gonna look around a little bit scale block 5 volts there we go so it's gonna take our signal from the digital input into something in millivolts okay I'm gonna make these two connect so I've just highlighted the bottom of the box hold my shift key I'm gonna arrow over with my um, directional arrows or I could have grabbed it with the mouse and moved it wherever I wanted to Next thing I'm going to do is add another block. This one's going to be that scale block that we saw just a second ago. Scale block, there we go. Okay. First thing we're going to do, highlight the um, arrow or the three red question marks, and I'm going to put in a, a uh, variable name. So I'm going to call it MV for millivolt to command A. When I hit enter, it says, okay, what kind of variable is this? This is a scale block, so I just hit okay. 
notice it added that code for us up here in the uh, the upper window. So millivolt command A. I'm going to take another input down here. I need to say, okay, I've got a signal coming into from the potentiometer, this 0 to 5,000 value. It's come to my signal in. Now what could the signal high be? Well, the high value right now is 5,000 millivolts. The low value will be zero. I'm going to go ahead and just connect these. I'm going to use my mouse this time. So signal high, go ahead and touch it and then let go. Go ahead and touch it, release the mouse, come back and get it again. That keeps me from having to draw lines myself. Um, engineering high and low. So it's going to say, okay, the scale block is scaling from what? Zero to 5,000. To what? Well, we want to send a signal to the valve of 300 to 1100 milliamps. So the value, the raw value, would be 1100 and then 300. This time I'm going to draw a line. So I'm um, going to the output of the input block and just uh, left mouse click and holding it over to there. Same thing over to here. Now I've also connect, got to connect my engineering low or limit high and limit low. So I'm going to connect it to the same values. And then of course you could grab all this and you can do with it whatever you want to. If you want to move it around or over or what have you. Once again, selecting everything, holding the shift key and then the left to right arrow buttons. Also want to create an output here. Then I'm going to connect from this block up to here. And this is going to be one of the indicators that we're going to look at on our service tool. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to restructure my, my pad here. And I'm going to look at OD1 var variables for the potentiometer in millivolts. So object dictionary, uh, pot in millivolts. Hit OK. Move him over here so it looks a little better maybe. Okay, move this guy over, it's easier to view. Okay, I also want to, I can make this a little larger here. So coming out of the scale block, if I select the scale block, if you come to the end, it'll tell you that the value has to be a real value. So I know that my command, um, it's not gonna be a real value, it's gonna be a word. So if I come over here and put in the value CMDA, command A, it's going to say, what kind of variable is it? I want that to be a word. Say, all right. And then I'm also going to have to have another um, box come at down here that converts from real to word. Now I could just key in real underscore to underscore word, or I can go look at or look for it in my program assistant. Maybe standard functions. No. User defined. No. Standard function blocks. No. I don't believe so. No. You get an idea of just kind of looking around what all information is in here. User defined program, conversion operators. Should have known that. Conversion operators. So we want to go from real to word. And select that. Okay. Line there. I'm going to come over here and do this trick where I go over, cut off of it, come back. Okay. So. Once we have all of this done, I believe the next thing I want to do is go ahead and um, reconfigure or renumber the ordering system. You can see there's numbers on these or these blocks, and that tells Codasys how it's going to execute and what order. So after you get done writing some code, um, go ahead and do a right mouse click, come down to order, order everything according to data flow. Nothing changed, but on larger programs you might have seen something that uh, got moved around and sometimes that can cause grief on trying to create code.
All right. So we've done that. The next thing, let's go ahead and project rebuild all. We can see we have zero errors and two warnings. Okay, very good, very good. This concludes part two video on ECU input file creation.